Good morning, guys. It's so beautiful here on the beaches of Zanzibar that, um, yeah, why not choose another video? I love to share these beautiful places with you guys. And I think it's a great uh, way to also talk about something interesting. So then I'm thinking, what can I make a video about? Well, <clears throat> why, by, why I find bite ball great, I think is a great video. I know I talk, uh, it seems to be only about that, that these days and then the general crypto markets also. But yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's really of interest to me. Sorry about the sunglasses, but if I put it off, it's a little bit too bright here, I can't, uh, so you're gonna have to watch your, uh, my phone here in my glasses. But um, why I like to invest in bite ball still today, even though the market is already in a clearly late uh, bubble phases, uh, is that I feel confident that I can hold on to them even if they crash 90% in value, in fiat value. It's now 200 million valued, uh, bite ball can go to 20 million in the bear market, yes. Uh, and I've been there before with NXT, it's not a fun experience at all. Uh, and it's very hard to not sell on the way down and not sell on the bottom is the hardest because uh, because when prices go down, the, the morale also goes down a lot. And so many people become negative, leave the project. <clears throat> so you really have to believe in it yourself for reasons that you find very important uh, because it has to come from within you and so i have i find i find these reasons in bite ball and that's why i still feel confident investing it today so what what's important for me well since i got interested in bitcoin before that i was already interested in 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 in, in cryptocurrency uh, not in cryptocurrency but in a better money system I, I was aware of how banking worked and fiat worked and that this was a huge taxation on people caused a lot of misery um uh, and um and a lot of mall investments also because they print money the interest rate is actually manipulated down and so uh, you can borrow money at actually interest rates lower than real inflation and so the money gets invested poorly because you don't have to pay the real interest rate but it's maybe a government system and so who gets those loans it's not everybody it's those that basically already have money uh, so that the bank don't take any risks because they can't afford to take risks because they are paid such a low interest rate also. So there's a lot of regulation and, and manipulation in the, in the fiat system that causes just a big unjust system, which makes that those that have money can use it to their advantage. They can get loans uh, with cheap interest rates, invest in real estate, all kinds of things and make real profit. Uh, but those that are poor can't save money on a bank account because, well, the, inter the interest rate is, is, is way below inflation. So if they put money on their bank account and start uh, building up savings, well, it's to no avail. Uh, and so the, the only way to save money is to buy a house uh, and get a loan. And that's not possible for the poor. Uh, it takes them 10 years to work from a poor situation to a situation where they have a, a regular, uh, decent paying job where they can get a bank loan. So it's just much harder for the poor if there is no decent money system eh? and it makes it much easier for the rich to stay rich it's not a fair system i am fully anarcho-capitalist meaning I, I i believe in capitalism but real capitalism eh? not uh, socialism or 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 or, or like like uh, all these uh, these uh, basically theft is bad for everyone it's like you don't need all these big names like communism capitalism if you have a small community you have someone stealing it's bad for everyone eh? because it demoralizes people to work if if somebody takes a piece of your, your 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 pie constantly or once like you have no security you cannot build a prosperous community eh? Uh, but it's the same if the leader of the community is stealing from everyone. Eh? That also has a negative effect on, a, a, on, on everyone. So <clears throat> you need a fair system and then you have the biggest growth for the whole community. But um, so, uh, so fiat is certainly not delivering that. And, and, and private money can deliver that, but it was outlawed. Eh, if you start your own currency, you, uh, you would get imprisoned. Uh, that was the situation before we were in. 
Uh, and so I was thinking of ways uh, to, to make systems so that people could um, save their money more easily. I was busy with permanent portfolio, diversified portfolios over different markets uh, and, and, and thinking of how to set up a system that people could easily save that way instead of a bank account. But luckily Bitcoin came there and, and, and this was, uh, wow, uh, it was a money system, a new money system that did not allow inflation and did not have counterparty risk. So people could really own that themselves and be sure that nobody can issue more of them out of thin air and basically steal from them. Uh, and they could also, they didn't have to put it at a, ba at a bank or so where it could be always taxed uh, by government easily. No, they could really own it themselves. So a great innovation. Um, but uh, um, uh, of course, um, it is because now it's private money and, and, and luckily the government hasn't clamped down on it, allowed it to happen and now we have thousands of uh, cryptocurrencies. So uh, what's the next step? Well, the, the next step is just basically to succeed in being adopted uh, by people and, and, and that's still not so easy. Uh, Bitcoin is not user friendly, that was not the case. Uh, since inception, it was not user friendly. It's a little bit comparable to these um, uh, shed boards, early internet time, where only geeks can really use it. Eh? And you see that today, even too, if people want to make a Bitcoin payment, even though you have a lot of like airbits, very easy to use wallets, buying Bitcoin, paying with Bitcoin. Uh, yes, people can do it uh, if you're uh, very familiar with smartphones. And, and uh, but it, but 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 it's not getting done. Um, um, uh, and it's not getting done because um, it's getting done, uh, but by very, very few people. So, so uh, like Roger Ver, for example, he pays every day with Bitcoin Cash now, uh, and, uh, and and he really makes a big, big effort to to use constantly these cryptocurrencies. But well, he's an exception eh? because most people, even if they believe in cryptocurrency, they invest in it. They don't use it eh? because it makes no financial sense to use it. It's better to keep it and to spend those other uh, fiat uh, money you have or if you only have crypto to, well, convert it into um, uh, fiat uh, sometime a, a bunch and pay with that because this is uh, much easier to pay with. It's not user friend more user friendly than fiat to p make payments with and this is the big challenge. Um, uh, so, um, so yeah, uh, I think Byteball addresses this problem um, in different ways. Um, so basically, is the financial incentive uh, is lacking here? Um, uh, even for people that have crypto, why pay with crypto? I don't make profit. I do help the crypto community by using crypto payments, but I don't profit myself. Uh, that's the problem here. And Byteball offers a uh, solution here with the cashback program. Eh? So um, people that use crypto uh, uh, with merchants that participate in the cashback program, well, get rewarded. They get 10% to 20% if they use normal crypto, 10%. If they use Bytes, uh, the currency of Byteball, then they get 20% cashback. Meaning they get a they get like they help the crypt, uh, crypto getting used in payments while they get paid for that. Eh? I think that's genius. It's simple and genius. And why is it genius? Because the financial incentive is needed here. Eh? The problem with the Bitcoin and many of the that copied this uh, model is who gets all the reward here? It's the people that own the coins. Yeah? So who gets all the reward for uh, people using uh, 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 Bitcoin? Uh, as payment. Is it the people that use it as payment? No, they don't get no reward. Ex actually, they get punished because, well, now they don't have any Bitcoin anymore. They have to buy it anew, have go through all these transaction fees. Uh, so they help the system, they don't get paid, they even have to pay. Um, uh, uh, but, but when they do that, uh, uh, the people that hold Bitcoin do get reward because now it's used more in commerce and so investors will see that and they will buy the coin as investment, the value goes up. So those that hold the Bitcoin get rewarded. But those are the only ones that get rewarded and they get rewarded tremendously. Um, and so what you need to set up is, 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 is coins that actually reward other parties also that are an important part of the success, such as the people that use the payment as, as a payment, but also, for example, if it's a decentralized cryptocurrency, you need 
well, different people that run these nodes eh, or that run the software so that it's really decentralized and not one server, but you need to also financially incentivize these people so they need also a piece of the reward eh, because if they don't do their job, well, uh, it's also not going to be decentralized. Now, you, you can skip that possibly, eh, like Bitcoin Cash is skipping that. Um, uh, maybe it's not necessary, eh, but I think what Decred did, for example, here or Dash, uh, where they give financial incentive to uh, to uh, to note operators is a good idea, and I think Byteball is lacking there personally. Eh? So the only one that gets financially rewarded is witnesses, the twelve witnesses. They get a piece of the transaction fee. For example, the people that run notes, not. Eh? So I think the, these kind of things uh, is smart as a coin designer to build in, but only if it's necessary. You don't well, you don't need to pay people that do their job uh, by themselves. Eh? Uh, so, 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 so that's also true. Huh? Uh, but for example, for Bitcoin, you can see that's not working. Eh? Not paying people that use Bitcoin as a payment, it's not working because the value of Bitcoin is, uh, well, because Bitcoin is not being successful in being adopted as a payment instrument, uh, in at least not in, 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 in merchant commerce. So if you see that something is not successful, that you do want to be successful, you need to financially incentivize it more. Um, so, so this is something that Byball does here. Um, something else also, uh, I think that is important, um, is, uh, is privacy. Um, because uh, where we started, uh, if you can really hold the money yourself, um, uh, well, you know, uh, privacy is very important then. Uh, if the value of cryptocurrency is privacy, then that's very important. And Byteball offers this by having a private currency also black buys. So, um, if you only have a public currency like Bitcoin has, well, you know, you're not competitive versus, versus those coins that are also building in uh, features so that the, uh, you get more privacy, eh? like Monero and Zcash um, or Pivx. Uh, uh, I haven't studied that all in detail, but, but um, it's logical that people will value more a cryptocurrency that offers them standard privacy than a cryptocurrency that does not offer that. Eh? So, uh, if you, because now we're in a free market here, if you want to be competitive, you're going to have to address this. Uh, and so, um, as an investor, eh, um, uh, this is very important. As a user, it's very important to have privacy or to be able to pay in privacy. Uh, and, 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 and so, as an investor, it's also very important to look at this. And Byteball offers a great solution there with the black bytes. Um, so, but what I also find very important is just the wallet. Like, if you install a wallet, you start using the wallet, it needs to be user-friendly. And, and this is something I find really lacking uh, in many, many cryptocurrencies. If you try to install a wallet, well, we're not talking about a Linux wallet, of course, nobody uses that. You, you, also not a desktop and even a laptop wallet. No, it's not of no importance. If you want adoption these days, you need to have a, a mobile wallet. Huh? So the big question for me is immediately, okay, let's install the mobile wallet. And let's look how it goes. How if it works? Look, does it look nice? Can your grandma start using this? That's the question. And and with Byteball, I was immediately impressed. Uh, the, the mobile wallet looks simple. Uh, uh, not too many buttons. And I noticed Tony really. Uh, it's not by accident this happened. Tony really like you can add so many thousand features, but that's not the way to design a good uh, product. You know, a, a radio with thousand buttons. No, who can use that? No one. Uh, Apple is very good in that by limiting the amount of buttons and make it user friendly means you have to really like cut back, cut back, cut back. Huh? And, 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 and just offer basic features that are very simple and very intuitive to use. Huh? I have the impression Tony is really aware of that, in touch with that, and, and, and shows when you use that Byteball wallet. It's certainly not perfect, eh? but it's 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 yeah uh, it's easy to use you can send the black bytes you can send uh, the bytes eh, uh, in an easy way and he's continuing to work on that eh, a few weeks back or two, one one week ago only uh, he implemented 
so that you can also pay now easily just to an email address uh, with, from within the wallet uh, and also or, or to or send coins to people for, from your telegram list or, or whatsapp list so uh, I love that um, so there's that and of course, uh, the most important thing here is, is scalability. Uh, you could see this from the start with Bitcoin, a proof of work. Um, yeah, it can scale, uh, but uh, but uh, you're gonna have a lot of computers uh, hashing, uh, competing uh, for those uh, Bitcoins. And so, well, um, it will require use a lot of energy and, 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 and that's okay if that's necessary then that's okay because Bitcoin creates a lot of value it's okay to run uh, uh, put a lot of energy into such system it provides a lot more value than the energy input but um, if it's not necessary well then it's a waste of energy resources huh? and it's logical that uh, in any industry you will have uh, more optim optimal uh, systems being built over time well not always it depends on the price of energy actually huh? For example, if you look at gold mining, there's an interesting gold show on TV, Gold Discovery, uh, or uh, yeah, and, uh, and and it's interesting because one of those guys is mining with a very old equipment, 40 year old, uh, and this is a big, big, big machine that's floating on the water uh, and mining gold in, in a much more efficient way than uh, the trucks are uh, of these days. These days they they mine with trucks that use a lot of fuel, um, and so. Uh, but what you see is that okay the mining operation is fine but the problem here with this very efficient system is that it's actually uh, it's not flexible enough uh, to, to move to places where the gold actually is uh, and so he, he's, he's successful in running these pieces but you can see that there's a good reason why while uh, being less efficient and more flexible has won out uh, in this industry so the same in cryptocurrency you don't need more efficient systems per se um, but um, uh, of course uh, even when you look at the gold mining and see all these trucks use a lot of fuel while well, the next truck uh, every every new truck that's being built loses less fuel per per, per uh, horsepower eh? so so there is a constant strive to be more efficient and this will also be the case in cryptocurrency um, and so if you can build this security because in cryptocurrency the big challenge is to create a system where you cannot uh, double spend and you cannot reverse transactions uh, that the blockchain or the chain of transactions is uh, set and fixed and cannot be manipulated that's the value there that has to be uh, created and that bitcoin for the first it did successfully thanks to proof of using proof of work but if there are alternative systems that use a lot less energy then it's very important to look at this uh, the same if you're in the car industry building cars you should always be very attentive to uh, innovations when it comes to efficiency because the customers look at this a lot uh, they look at how much does it use per mile or per kilometer this car eh? um, so uh, there are periods where this is important periods where it's less important uh, but um, uh, overall it is important uh, and so I've always looked at this also in the cryptocurrency market uh, first I was very very attracted to proof of stake uh, I think they did great innovations there and I, I believe in it I think it is solid um, but of course um, um, uh, the, the the problem with the project I was investing in with NXT is that it, it had that right but it didn't have the the the, the, the user friendliness right eh? the the building from the customer's perspective wasn't happening in my opinion that's why I, I did not continue to invest in it but the proof of stake system was really very well done 100% eh? proof of stake I really believe in this but okay Next up came uh, Tony I, with Byteball project that uh, caught my attention and, and so they don't use proof of stake, they use something new again, eh? it's DAG. Uh, so it's different from a blockchain in that a blockchain is one chain, a DAG can be different chains next to each other uh, and blocks are not used anymore so transactions are built on each other. I found that very interesting but also um, there is no uh, proof of work here, there is no um, uh, use of energy uh, processing power uh, to validate a transaction uh, it uses a different system um, 
and uh, well I can't I'm not technical enough to judge whether it is uh, secure uh, uh, but I trust uh, that it is secure and um, and and I think that's really great um, because this has a, a very big influence on the transaction fees um, or on the inflation um, yeah uh, basically the transaction fees is like uh, uh, how much you pay in fuel to drive a car huh? uh, and, uh, and 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 so if it's not an efficient system it's it's a lot huh? uh, and, uh, and and in the case of biteball um, it has a, a very low transaction fee that is very very likely con will continue to stay low even if the system grows a lot I think that's uh, that's very important um, so voila uh, that was it uh, is there anything else I, I love about Byteball uh, well uh, the final thing is of course also distribution like it's a competitive industry so um, giving free samples to people is a very good way to get people started with your product or with your coin um, and, 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 and so in Byteball the whole system is built on the idea that okay we give free coins away in exchange for real adoption uh, and that's basically how the coins are distributed not via mining but via eh, um, free giveaways uh, you do have to put some effort in um, in, a, in order to get them but you can get them I think that's, 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 that's very 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 smart and also addresses the adoption problem here eh? so today people start using uh, Bitcoin actually no they don't start using Bitcoin the only thing that happens today is people start investing in Bitcoin eh? uh, and they do that because they think okay I put this money into this Bitcoin it goes up I make money okay but um, they don't start using Bitcoin as a payment system and so uh, again here eh, uh, if you um, um, yeah uh, you, go, you it's, it's if you can give some free coins to people uh, well it gets them started uh, to use it as a payment system because eh? uh, that's how you transfer the coins uh, via payment uh, from one wallet to another so um, I love it and another big thing is security I just made a video on that uh, buy ball wallet tips and tricks but the big challenge here for cryptocurrency is how do you make a user-friendly system that secures people their coins because they are now become fully responsible uh, for their coins eh? and this is like unacceptable for people if they lose their passwords then they lose their coins this is not user-friendly enough it needs to be changed but how this is a very difficult problem to solve and what you see in the traditional cryptocurrency world is that they try to solve this with uh, offline wallets, um, backups, uh, paper wallets, these are all not user-friendly enough. Eh? You can say to a loved one, okay, hey, write the password down eh, uh, on a paper, eh, uh, so you have a secure backup, but oh, so many things can go wrong in this, well, f uh, big chance they won't even do that, uh, but even if they do it, they, they write it down on a paper that they put somewhere that they lose, or, um, yeah, or later they change the password and they don't make a new backup uh, yeah, yeah off, you have even for geeks themselves who are much more uh, yeah uh, aware of the dangers here uh, you have many ho just horrible stories of people losing their coins due to a backup uh, mistake so this is not the way forward also hardware wallets um, are, are people going to buy a new device to secure their coins, I, I don't think that's uh, user friendly. So I think Byteball really makes a big step there in, in using multi device wallets. This is a way to secure your coins without having to put them offline, which is just not user friendly enough. Uh, you can keep them online, but by using multi device wallets, you can basically get very high security because you, you need to make you can make it as such that other wallet needs to. Uh, approve a transaction so that could be another wallet of your own another device another phone another laptop but it could be even a, a friend or a family member that needs to validate the transaction before it goes out and this creates a lot of security in a very user-friendly way and it allows many other 
very nice um, features uh, multi device wallet uh, it's not only giving you security it's also giving you a backup huh? without having to make a backup huh? if you lose your phone you have a multi device wallet you have it also on other devices and that counts for your bytes and black bytes so uh, I think it's genius uh, and that's why I love this project I hope you guys had uh, a great time watching this video and it may inspire you to buy the coins there's this other thing like I think it's just ridiculously cheap 200 million per byte ball you can still buy this even though the market is very bullish uh, and many coins are at valuations I think are really not good buys eh? uh, but this coin yes I do think at current valuation is still a good buy this is also very important because what's the point of, of let's say byte ball is, is, is exactly the same today but it's in the top 10 yeah then I don't have to make this video because the world already recognizes it's a great project and, uh, and and you're gonna and you're paying already premium prices for that, but uh, but it's not in the top ten. It was top thirty, and now it's top seventy-two. It's dropped to seventy-two. So <clears throat> I don't think the valuation is correct at all. Bye, guys. Then forgot to say one thing that I love about Virgin, but only uh, but only discovered myself on a later stage but the conditional payments the focus on conditional payments and smart contracts is genius um, uh, and this goes against to again to how do you get the coin adopted and I think I was wrong uh, and people are wrong in general to think that they gonna succeed by approaching the diff this traditional payments uh, market it's um, uh, it's just very very difficult to become more user friendly than fiat in merchants uh, stores or, or because you 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 have very very high competition. There's so many payment companies that want to get in there and and um, and and um, well, it's it's been fine tuned for many 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 years, decades, uh, millennia even. Uh, uh, you have to focus on the, 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 what, what, what new does it allow and what's the like Tesla is never gonna sell an electric car if it wouldn't uh, give you something that's unavailable in a, in a, in a fuel car uh, so so that's why hybrids hmm, is not really that such uh, that big of a success um, so 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 the, 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 or, or why did eBay succeed or Amazon and what not because it was a traditional bookstore or a, a traditional auction site no eBay succeeded because you could find on eBay things for auction that you could never find yourself in your uh, environment you could find things for sale very very specialized items that was uh, sold by only one seller in Japan somewhere and before you did not have access to that market you would never be able to find that that's how eBay started out by offering something that was unavailable traditional auction markets same with Amazon yes they offered the same books but the way they offered them was unavailable they uh, in traditional markets you had all kinds of user reviews of the books that you could read for free and it, it gave you much better information or whether it's worth buying this book or not so you have to offer certain features that are unavailable in the traditional market and you're not doing that by offering Bitcoin to pay a merchant instead of fiat or what's what, what's different here it's just actually more hassle to take uh, your phone and make a payment with Bitcoin it's more hassle than to pay with your bank card or with uh, fiat uh, cash bills so it's just not competitive it's not gonna work out you have to offer something that is um, uh, better better than fiat payments and, and and you can't really enter the market in the just uh, merchant uh, transaction because just this is just a simple payment there's nothing else going on there um, so you have to add value there um, and you have to do a lot more than a payment there and for example automatic interchange of information when you make the payment that way or a quicker payment um, and what 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 Byteball is doing is focusing on conditional payments, eh? where you can, okay, you can make a payment, but you can set a condition to it. You can say, okay, this payment can be made from my account if this condition is met. Eh? If, for example, this person uh, sends me uh, black by this amount of black bytes, you can send my this amount of bytes to him. So then the system itself will check. Okay, now we wait for this person to send black bytes. 
and only when it's sent the black bytes then your payment will go through and if not the money stays with you or stays locked uh, yeah it's locked for a certain time you can set that and then it comes back automatically uh, so uh, so this is a conditional payment making that there is no counterpart risk for both parties to ch to exchange bytes and black bytes with each other there's no counterparty risk at all both parties are certain to receive their goods if they do their part of the job uh, this is uh, very very smart but you can do so so much more with a conditional payment eh? you can offer insurance eh? like okay uh, if i travel and uh, my plane uh, or, 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 or my, my, I miss my flight you can get insurance for that but you know how it goes with insurance eh? you have to start asking for that money they will they will find maybe thousand reasons why uh, the insurance does not apply here and it's basically not worth it uh, and so the insurance industry um, sucks uh, from that perspective um, and so uh, if you do this with this new tech conditional payments you can you can set up insurance where you are certain to be paid if a certain event happens and immediately eh? the insurer is also certain to be paid by you um, uh, so um, yeah you can do so much with this um, you have many other industries eh? um, just watch part three uh, of my interview with Tony to have more info on that um, but yeah, I think this is a very important part also why I believe in Biteball, uh, that it's really focused on the right segment. It, it's, it focuses both uh, industries here actually, uh, the traditional payment industry, but it also is really focused on innovative ways to pay each other. You can't do it fiat. Bye guys.